Welcome to this week's Bite Size Worship as we continue to look at the great I Am sayings of Jesus. This week we'll consider I Am the Vine. We'll begin with an opening prayer. Let us remember that God is with us now. There is no place where God is not. Wherever we go, there God is. Now and always he encompasses us, looks upon us with his mercy and is ready to hear us when we call. Amen. Our Bible reading this week is from John's Gospel and is read by Sue Todd. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father glorify, is glorified by this, that you bear fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. I like the garden to be tidy, so when things start to run amok, I attend to them. And I usually do a spot of pruning, especially where I think that Vincent's been a bit too half-hearted. He's hidden the good secateurs, but I have a pair of my own hidden, and I'm not going to tell you where, just in case it gets back to him. In our Gospel reading today, we find Jesus has something to say about pruning and cutting back branches, but he's talking about people, not plants. He says outright that he is the true vine, the only source of everlasting abundant life, and that God, his Father, is the gardener. We, the followers of Jesus, are the branches of that vine. But even though we can confidently describe ourselves as branches in that one true vine, we need to be aware that there are two types of branch on a vine, one that bears fruit and one that doesn't. And it's the fruit-bearing branches that are of value. In today's verses, it's made clear that God expects us to bear fruit. Just becoming a Christian is not the end of the process. We haven't arrived when we become Christians. We're just setting out on our journey on a lifelong process. First, we should become more like Jesus. And this we do when we behave more like Jesus. And we have a pattern to follow. From Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. If we're to call ourselves Christians, we should be making a real effort to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, to change our selfish, self-centred personalities and be aware it isn't pick and mix. We can't major on love, joy and peace and continue to be impatient, wicked, unfaithful or out of control. Then we should share Jesus' concern for the salvation of others. We have a duty to tell others about Jesus and about what he has done for us all. Jesus reminds us that God is the gardener who takes great care of his vine. He cuts off anything that might sap its vitality and strength. Anything that produces no fruit must go. Jesus is speaking to his followers, to us. God loves us as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us as we are. He wants us to grow, to be fruitful. We know from the Bible that God's attitude to us as children is loving, but not overindulgent. 
it says in Revelation, those whom I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Even productive branches have to be pruned hard so they become more fruitful still. This is not a comfortable message. It seems that, fruitful or not, we're going to feel the effect of God's secateurs. So, there's a lot at stake. How do we bear fruit? Jesus tells us there's only one way. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Over and over, he urges us to remain in him, because without him, we can do nothing. But what does he mean when he says remain in him? To be in Jesus, we must first have turned to Jesus, repented and have accepted him. We must be as if born again, made new. And to remain in him, we have to stay close to him. And we can do this through praying, through studying his word, through worshipping with others and through making him the centre of our lives. Without Jesus, you and I can achieve nothing. But with him, we can all bear fruit. The quality of that fruit is not our responsibility. We're simply to stay faithful. God will bring the kind of fruit through us that pleases him. The quantity of that fruit is not our responsibility. Our duty is to remain in him. God will produce the quantity of fruit from our lives that pleases him. Our relationship with Jesus needs the same attention and nurturing as any other relationship. If we can't be bothered to pray, study, worship or listen to him, we will lose contact with her on the vine. But while we have breath, it's never too late. We can still turn back, still renew our relationship, still repent if we recognise our danger. And we can once more become fruitful and nourished by the vine. Thank God. Our song this week is A New Commandment. closing prayer. 
Help us, Father, to know your love more deeply, to be filled with your spirit more fully, to respond to your call more readily, to rest in your peace more completely, to reflect your generosity more joyfully, to follow Christ our Lord more faithfully. Amen. Thank you.